so Kisan, Zokio uh, Medical University, Aiku Botasan from Saitima, uh, and Masako Takashima from Aichi Medical University Hospitals. So let's start with the discussions, and the first would be infection control. I'm pretty sure we all agreed uh, that um, we were interested in very much in infection care, infection control. So uh, let's start with Makaso, Masako Takashima. -san. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you are quiet. <laughs> Just undo. Can you unmute yourself because we can't hear you? Thank you very much. You are very nervous. Don't be. <laughs> Thank you for your warm introduction, uh, Professor Esther. My name is Masako Takeshima, Chief Nurse at the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, Aichi Medical University Hospital. I'm very pleased and grateful for this chance to talk to you today. Today, I'm going to talk about infection control in caring for preterm infants as, the, as an NICU. First of all, let me introduce you to Aichi Prefecture, where our hospital is located. Aichi lies in the middle of Japan and is famous for the castle with a pair of golden shachihokos on the top. Shachihoko is imaginary creature with a dragon head and a fish body. In the spring, the castle and cherry blossoms around it are blessed, blessed taking beauty. And if you are a fan of Hayao Miyazaki, film director of many pro pro popular animated films, you would be excited at the Ghibli Park, which opens this hall in the neighborhood area of our hospital. Please come and visit Aichi. You won't regret. Now, let me introduce the, the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, NICU, and Growing Care Unit, GCU, in our hospital. In a, in a year, around 300 babies are ad admitted. Last year, 46 babies weighed more, more than 1,500 grams and 26 babies weighted between 1,500 and 1,100 grams. Some babies need head surgery or gastrointestinal surgery. Other need a treatment for brain hypothermia. Still other are born with cleft lips and part. We have nine beds at the NICU and also nine beds at the ZCU. Six doctors work with 22 nurses at NICU and 13 nurses at the ZCU. I'd like to slide you a short video clip of a typical morning at the NICU and ZCU. In the morning, nurses, doctors, and pharmacists all work together for 
environmental cleaning. Everyone finds some place or things that are frequently touched and clean them up for 10 minutes. Probably this is not common practice in Japan. And we studied this because we had a problem. We need to have difficulty securing, securing the time for cleaning up on a daily basis. When getting busy, we sometimes skip cleaning up. Check, checklist or assignment table doesn't work, didn't work. To solve the problem, the nurses decided to cleaning up all together for 10 minutes. Seeing that, seeing, seeing that a doctor joined. Naturally, other co workers joined of their own will. Now we have been cleaning up all together for over one year. Thanks, thanks to the voluntary collaborative clean up, we find ourselves more united as one team. Now I'm telling you about culture test, which we performed for evaluation of all babies to the, to be hospitalized. We performed a screening that a screening test in admission, and then continue a culture test once a week for monitoring. We take car contact con contact precaution pre until we confirm negative test results mrsa and infections pragenic bacteria are checked in nasal culture test in mrsa and espl in feces culture test <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Next, I'm telling you. Sorry. <laughs> here, uh, the slide here is the five moments for hand hygiene, as you you may know. One, before touching a patient. Two, be before clean or aspect procedure. Three, after body fluid exposure list. Four, after touching a patient and five after attaching patient surroundings. As I told you, however, it's often difficult to make an appro appropriate judgment about when we perform hand hygiene in, in, in incubators. So, we will define best practice for diaper change for baby, babies in incubators. We've added the five moments for hand hygiene to the diaper change procedure. The picture shows a simulation training for best practice, also a real in 
incubator is not used there. From time to, from time, to time, we use training scenarios uh, assuming the sudden events. This is a video clip that shows real diaper changes in the incubator where tiny baby two nurses are engaged as far as possible so that one, one can stabilize the baby. They are wearing two gloves on each hand. After handling waste plus products, they remove the outer gloves, gloves. They open and close the windows of the incubator using the elbow or the back of hand. We use the fingers some hands and four arms for different purposes. Sharing the loads of cleanliness and uncleanliness. We are using the palm to hand the baby in a steady position while using the fingers to do other little things. For example, when one nurse is engaged in di diaper change alone, and the roots lying at the, the baby's feet, she somehow manage, man, manages to Little the root in, in a way the root. We do not touch the diaper by using different fingers for different purposes. Delicate, delicate, delicate move on the nurse's fingers, providing, providing care as well as as comfort to a tiny baby, a uh, beautiful and like an art. So sometimes I feel the nurse takes the width out of the windows at the bottom. They wash their hands to the elbows thoroughly. In 2019, we carried out an observational study on how often the device on the baby's nose was touched while what kind of care was being provided and how, how hand hygiene was performed after a touch of the device. We investigated two centers for preterm infants receiving non-invasive pressure, pressure ventilation in the NICU. The slide shows the result of this device relative care of the total of 136 scenes of care. The nurse touched the device in 94 scenes. They did most frequently when 
checking vital signs, and second most frequently when providing synchronously care, adding up to two, 26 seasons. Excretory care, including changing the diaper, removing gas, and administering administering and animal in extreme care, the device was easily slipped out of the place by a big change in position or moved due to straining or stress. To sum up, how can we perform the good hand hygiene at appropriate timing when we are caring for a baby in the incubator? One way is to meet their physical, physiological needs and provide care in a condition that is sta stable, stabilized and comfortable to them. The resulting in reduced events and decreased timing of hand hygiene. Or another is to have the role of cleanliness and uncleanliness shared by two nurses and engaging together. The other ways are to wash your hands to the elbow and to use the fingers, thumb, hands, and forearm, differently for different purposes. Lastly, for the future, incubator are to be improved in a way that allows us to open the close its windows by a foot lever over or the voice because the incubator's window is part of the baby's environment and a frequently touched area. That's all I have to say. Thank you for listening. And I would like to thank Professor Miki Konishi, Esther, and Julie for their insight, insightful advice all the doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and co-workers at GNICU and GCU for their invaluable support, and Ms. Sukuru for her language support in this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Masako. It was great, and I know that everyone is liking it. I have one question to you. That was the question asked. The nests, what you are using for the babies is beautiful. That where is it coming from? Is it Japanese? You know, the little nests, what you were using? Ah. Thank, thank you for asking. And also, Today, right. she support to, support to translate English Japanese. Yes, yes. She is a junior nurse, so she I work with her. So, uh, thank you for asking. So. Positioning. You mean the positioning mat we use um, in the incubator? Sorry, we can't hear you. Just can come closer. Okay. Um, hi. 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 Can you hear me? 
Yes. So oh, the yeah. question was that what mm -hmm. what is the nest what you are using for the babies? Is it a yeah. Japanese product? Is it the one um, we yeah. use in the incubators? Yes. Oh, um, positioning them. Uh, it's the Japanese company made it and we used that. Yeah, that was beautiful. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks, Masako. That was really great. <laughs> uh, let's come together with uh, the next um, discussion. And this is the bar care or the enema, what we all know about from um, AI, Kubota. Uh -uh. Okay. And my name is Aikubota. I have worked at Saitama City Hospital as an NICU nurse for 18 years. I received a certified nurse in neonatal intensive care from Japan Nurses Association in 2018. Today, I'm going to talk about glycerin enema and the discharge of intestinal gas using Nelton catheter for babies in NICU. I cannot talk English well, Today, I will play the recorded voice and announce it. Saitama City Hospital, where I work, is located in Saitama City, Saitama Prefecture. There are 15 NIC new beds, 18 GC new beds, and eight neonatal beds in the pediatric ward. There are seven neonatal doctors. We have 50 nurses, of which two are NIC certified nurses. This is the clinical record of the neonatal department. In the NICU, we mainly treat preterm infants after 22 weeks of gestation and low birth weight infants weighing 300 grams or more. We have the third highest record in the prefecture in terms of extremely low birth weight infants, extremely low birth weight infants, the number of cases of tracheal intubation, and neonatal surgical diseases. We accept about 100 newborns born outside our hospital each year. A glycerin enema is a procedure that uses glycerin to soften stools and facilitate bowel movements. It also stimulates the intestinal wall and promotes intestinal peristalsis. It promotes decompression of the lower gastrointestinal tract and facilitates digestion. Premature infants tend to swallow air during drinking milk or sucking on a pacifier. And their bowel movement is irregular and weak. Further, air enters the digestive tract due to nasal CPAP and nasal high flow cannula. So, Breathing movement is easily obstructed because of abdominal bloating. For these reasons, an enema is an essential care to prevent the worsening of respiratory conditions. Enemas are routine care in our NICU. However, it is also stressful and painful care for infants. If not done properly, it can lead to intestinal damage and hemodynamic fluctuations. Especially for extremely low birth infants, enemas can cause fluctuations in blood pressure, and there is a risk of intraventricular hemorrhage. Nurses are required to make judgments about the need to do an enema for the patient. So, we have to carefully observe vital signs and stress signs. 
These are equipment. Nailed in catheters are selected according to the weight of the baby. At our hospital, we use 8 FR Nelodin catheters for infants under 1,500 grams and 10 FR Nelodin catheters for infants over 1,500 grams. The enema water is warm to between 37 and 40 degrees Celsius. In our NICU, we use a dry heat type warmer to avoid overheating. The table shows the consistency and amount of the enema solution. A 25% glycerin enema is made by mixing equal parts distilled water and enema solution. These criteria were determined in consultation with nurses and doctors. Since the weight of the baby changes daily, two nurses check the consistency and amount before the procedure. We choose care according to the baby's situation. Infants who are prone to breathing instability due to abdominal distension should be given enemas two to three times a day. We do an enema before feeding. If we give three times a day, it should be at 4 a.m., 1 p.m., and 10 p.m. Infants with ventilator, CPAP, or nasal high flow cannula, HFNC, should discharge intestinal gas using a nelidin catheter in addition to enema. In the case of infants with stable breathing who are not in the acute phase or infants greater than 36 weeks corrected gestational age, we extend the interval between enemas. If there is no bowel movement for 12 to 24 hours, give the enema. Do not do the enema if the patient can defecate on his or her own. In the case of infants who are about to be discharged from the hospital, stimulate defecation with a cotton swab. Before discharge, we always instruct their family on how to perform stimulating defecation with a cotton swab. I'll show you a video of the enema. This patient was born at 27 weeks gestational age and then 30 weeks corrected gone He has a nasal high flow cannula. Before an enema, change the position from prone to supine. Sometimes infants on mechanical ventilation may be given an enema in the prone position. When infants are in the supine position, they often cry and stretch their limbs in the air and spread their fingers. Therefore, we wrap the upper limbs using linen during care. We put a lot of lubricant on the Nelodin catheter and insert it gently because vital signs can change and babies may act disorganized behavior. Inject the enema slowly over five to 10 seconds.
The next video is giving an enema to an infant on a ventilator. First, hold with nurse's hands and speak kindly to a baby. His upper limbs are wrapped in linen so that the hands can be easily moved to his mouth in a flexed position to support stabilizing behavior. Keeping the positioning equipment around the baby can provide care without interfering with the baby's stabilizing behavior. These are the equipment for discharge of intestinal gas using a Nelaton catheter. We use a 33 centimeters Nelaton catheter. It is longer than one that we use in enema. Infants who are hard to burp, who are prone to vomiting, or who have gastroesophageal reflux may need this care regularly at home. You may also teach your family how to care before discharge. The final video is of a patient who was born at 28 weeks gestational age with a BP shunt and is now 41 weeks corrected dog. We do discharge of intestinal gas using a Nelodin catheter. My name is Today, I told you the enema and the cotton swab care at our NICU. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you, Ai. Uh, that was really interesting. And I'm, uh, we got lots of questions, but we can uh, share at the end of the presentations. So let's move to um, uh, Professor Miki Konishi. Um, and actually, Yuka Suzuki-san, developmental positioning skills, and uh, she's talking from, um, she's a master's student and talking uh, talking from the Tokyo Medical University Hospital.
My name is Yuka Suzuki. I have worked at Tokyo Medical University as a NICU nurse for 10 years. Today, I'm going to talk about positioning for babies in NICU. Firstly, I will introduce my hospital. Our NICU has 12 beds and the GCU has 24 beds. We have through seven full-time neonatologists, one clinical psychologist, 26 registered nurses who work at NICU, and 24 registered nurses at the GCU. The patient to nurse ratio is three to one in the NICU and six to one in the GCU. This table shows the total number of inpatient in our hospital. About 300 babies are hospitalized each year. In recent years, we take care of more than 20 extremely low birth weight infants a year. This table shows the total number of patients less than 30 weeks gestational age. About 30 babies are hospitalized a year. In 2020, four babies were born at 22 weeks gestational age, and only one of them died. Then I'll move on to today's topic of positioning skills. We usually set premature infants in the fetal position immediately after hospitalization. How we position is according to the developmental stage. Infant at 30 to 32 weeks or less corrected gestation is typically intubated and mechanically ventilated. The positioning aims to increase the muscle tone of the body. In front of 32 weeks or more corrected age is often just after extubate. In this case, the aim is increase their sensory motor experiences. In front of 36 to 38 weeks or more corrected age are closer to being discharged from the hospital. So the aim is to construct body representation sensory motor. We observe the muscle tone, the stress sign, and stabilization sign. If the tone is low and the baby shows stress sign, we do position primary. This baby is 31 weeks corrected gestational age. Like this, Rene is two bus towels and pink bed sheets. Next is Rene, an intubate infant at 26 weeks corrected gestational age. Roll up a towel and place a rinse cloth over it. Use a small towel for the head side because it's easy to press the ventilator tube. In the case of fewer than 25 weeks infants with very vulnerable skin, we use silver seed for burn patients. It's on the next slide. This sheet is made of three layers of aluminum metallized non barbed surface material, polyethylene, non based non barven fabric and polyester based non barven fabric. And this sheet is less likely to stick and uh, gentle on the skin. There are four points of good supine position. The first is maintain the fetal position. The second is to rub tightly and apply moderate pressure. Third, ensure that the baby's buttocks and soles are are in contact with the pamper. First, the baby hand should be in the middle of the body or near the mouth. There are four points of the good prone position. First, the baby's buttocks and soles should be in the straight line. 
The second is to comfortably place the baby's face on the side on the bring the baby's hand to mouth. Third, bend the limbs so that the baby's elbow and knee are in contact with the mat and the elbow and the knee are closer together. First, the neck should be aligned with the tailbone. I'd like to show a sequence of postural changes from supine table using some photos. First, loosen the towel around the baby. Then hold the baby keeping the fetal position with the nurse's hand. While holding a baby through, we move him to side lining position. And then through, we move him to prone position. After a baby turned to the prone position, the nurse pulls out the nurse's hand and wrap the baby with the towel firmly. Next, I would like to explain that in case of infant at 30 to 32 weeks or more corrected gestational age, he is 33 weeks corrected gestational age. In case of the prone position, place the baby buttocks attached to the linen and soles up. Create a space for the baby to move his neck and hands and keep the back of the head in contact with the linen. Linen is a positioning mat to roll back towels around it and pink cross over them. Finally, I would like to explain that in case of the baby at 36 to 38 weeks or more corrected gestational age, linen is three rolled towels and pink cross over them. I would like to finish with a summary. Positioning is carried out for all infants in NICU and DCU. Maintaining fetal flexion in the base of the position for preterm infants, access of infant mastodon and behavior during care and choose the positioning method according to the developmental level. I'd like to thank you, my colleagues at Tokyo Medical University Hospital. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Masako. Um, I just keep missing the names, Yuka san. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for the presentations. Now we have lots of questions. And as it was expected, uh, we talked about it. So let's go through a few. I think you will be interested in um, um, everyone the answers. Um, so we got the message that the nesting and um, and the positional aids are made in Japan and lots of companies are there. We got a message that where to get it, but I doubted that in Australia we will get it from Japan. However, it's really nice. We can produce something. Um, Uh, uh, and uh, the one question was how far are you putting, inserting the catheter? And I think uh, you already mentioned it on one of the slides that depend one centimeter per kilo. Is it true? Do you remember, Mickey, we were talking about that one? No, I, I think Sorry. you are muted. Uh Sorry, I missed your, your question. Uh, so the question was that how far you are inserting the catheter when you are giving the enema? Uh, one cent per one kilogram. Yeah, one centimeter per kilo, yeah. Uh, the question is that, have you ever used suppository instead of enema? Mm. 
あさあの座薬を使うことはありますかと。No. ない。No. No. No. Uh, as I heard that you are talking about the enema as water and glycerin, is it true? Like you are diluting up the glycerin with water. Do you know the concentration? How strong is the enema? If you don't, you can send us the message, uh, the, the replies later, and that we can distribute. あのグリセリンを水,水で薄めてるか生殖で薄めてるかああえっとウォーター水ですあウォーターディステイルジャストウォーター but you don't have glycerin in it なの just ダイリューティッググリセリンダイリューティッドインウォーター how strong is the concentration コンセントレーション。えっ、ー、と、濃度は 25% にしている。25%。55%。And what is the volume you are giving for each enema? えっと、あ、あの表を見せてください。あ、そうですね。Uh, I show the table again. That one. <laughs> So this one is approximately what we are using as well in, in our nursery. Um, there came a question about um, for Yuka, um, yeah. and that was about the positioning that do you do uh, like a midline, keeping the head midline at the beginning of positioning? Uh, I can translate. えっと、生後すぐ、えっと、頭を真ん中にして寝かせてますか生後数日でも頭を中心に、中心に、まっすぐに寝かせてますかっていう。両いで。で、do you mean、um, plum position? Yes. 両替ですか両替。両替のみ。72時間を両替。ああ。Oh. Past seventeen two hours, uh, we is positioning is only plum position for seventy two hours, plum position only. Yes. Okay. Uh, another question came. From From about swaddling, you know, when you are wrapping the baby in a swaddle cloth, are you doing routinely or you are not doing? <laughs> If you are talking, we can't hear you because you are muted. Unmute yourself and you can say the swaddles. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> yeah. I, I talked to Mion as she, as she translated. <laughs> we talked about the swaddling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, we used to for the baby who is in the incubator, but uh, we we don't use use every time. Only 
babies is not uh, babies are not stable. Yes. So oh. We use temporary temporary use that. Thank you, ladies. It was very interesting. Um, if anyone has any more questions, please uh, let us know and we ask the Japanese um, experts. I think um, it, one, of, um, one of the questions uh, way up the top was how much um, parents are involved in the care of the child. Anyone? Miki? Masako? <laughs> Are the parents coming to do the care? 